I'm improving my image and maybe you should too. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode of Shop Talk, I want to share with you this camera I picked up. So this is a little bit different. So this was a little bit south of 80 bucks, I think maybe 74-ish or something, free shipping with Prime. Uh, what that what this is is an industrial USB camera. So it's got a 5.8 millimeter by 3.2 millimeter sensor on it. It's a two megapixel sensor. Uh, it's a, also a low light camera. However, the nice thing about this is really the lens that comes along with it. So it's got a telephoto to wide angle lens. So it goes from 20 degrees to 70 degrees. It's got an aperture. So there's a lot of flexibility in this camera. And the other piece I like about it is the various frame rates. Now, at this sensor size, it's a native 1080p camera, uh, and that's at 30 frames per second. But this can also jump up to 120 frames per second uh, at 640 by 480. Now, that is a smaller resolution, of course, but one of the things when I do that is you notice, like in the table or the uh, chop saw video in aluminum, you know, I usually uh, group up like four of them to increase the resolution value on the screen. And it still really works for getting that detail of what's happening at those higher speeds that you might be missing and slowing it down. For those who may not know, uh, this video you're watching is at 30 frames per second. So if we go to, to 120 frames per second, it's basically slowing things down by about fourfold which is actually pretty good. So when you want to take a look at what's happening at higher speeds, you know what's happening with chips on the CNC, uh, how a 3D printer is working, how a chop saw is cutting, you want to get up to those speeds. Now, to be honest, I'd really like to be higher. I'd like to be actually double that, about 240. But for this price range, 120 is actually not too bad. Now, it will also do a 720p at 60, and then the full 1080 is only 30. So it does give a nice range of actual frame rates uh, for this camera. The other thing is it is a rather low light camera, so that's good. I don't need a ton of lighting for this. And lighting is usually an issue with 3D printing, trying to you know get away from some of the shadows and things like that. So I'm rather excited. I think one of the only downsides to this is this still has a USB 2.0 interface, which is both a a plus and a minus. Um, you know, the plus is I can use it with some of my older laptops because I could have a ton of older laptops with USB 2.0. But the negative is obviously it's only at USB 2.0 speeds. For 1080p at 30 frames, yeah, that's pretty good. It, sh it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, going above that is where you really need USB 3.0. So I'm pretty excited for the money. So I'm going to give this a try. And as I've been talking, I will have been running some videos up in the corners, etc., stuff like that, because I've shot those after I did this unboxing. It comes in a rather undescript box, this box, so I didn't waste the time just taking it out of the box. And again, I'm not sure how long the cord is. The cord looks like it's about 10 feet long, which is really nice. And it does have a coupler here so you can detach it. So again, you can mount it um, you know, to your printer or whatever you have and then connect it to your computer and then separate it from your computer if you need or this cable system. Or I'm going to mount this on like a dolly system probably. So a lot of different opportunities because it does have two quarter 20s on either side of it. And so that's a nice mounting option, and the, it's really lightweight. I forget the, the weight. I'll see if I can't put the weight in the comments below or in the description below. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. If you're looking for an affordable industrial camera, you want to up your game, or you're looking for something in this realm where you can attach it to the computer, get 120 um, at VGA resolution, this is the guy for you. I'm really excited again about this because I think it's going to open up some new possibilities and some new dynamics. One one of the things I like using the USB cameras for is um, uh, Candy Labs Velocity, I believe it's called. Uh, the free version works at VGA resolution for time lapses, and this is crazy good. The paid for version is a little bit expensive. I want to say I think it's around 80, 90 bucks. I, I tell you what, you know, Candy Labs, if you're listening, if you got that down to like 30 bucks for like a single user license or something, I, I think you would sell a lot more because it really is a super good time lapse program but it is a little bit pricey but again they have a free version that they claim will always be free for 
or VGA versions, which actually works out okay because I'm using a 1080p uh, frame here. So if I want to put a time lapse up in the corner, that's only going to take up the corner. That's about quarter of the frame. So you know, having a standard VGA resolution up there is okay. Um, so anyways, hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, hey, give it a big thumbs up. Give it two thumbs up if you can. No, don't give it two thumbs up because then that'll take away the first thumbs up. So just one. Uh, anyways, bell's going to be over there. Hit that bell, which means going down there. I put out regular content. Let me know in the comments below if you got something like this or something better. Always love to hear from you guys. If you got some questions about it, I'm always here to answer them. So Swag Shop's up, up there. And we'll see you guys in the next video where we do something cool with this. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on